Usually you should trust your doctor's advice, but there are times where you shouldn't. Now in this video, I'm going to show some actual clinical case studies from my practice about people that were dismissed or mistreated, or in the worst case, recommended advanced or invasive procedures and surgeries and medications that they did not need. Now when I was 22, let's go back 15 years or so here, there was this odyssey that I went on that I've talked about here in many of my videos, where I had a long history of digestive illness and I went to all of the Ivy League trained specialists and physicians. Remember, I'm from Connecticut. That's where Yale is. And Harvard is not too far away, a couple hours away. And yet, by going to all of these specialists, not only did they not know what I had, on top of that, they weren't even able to actually treat it. So here I was on this weird odyssey with something that is really impacting my quality of life and something that even the best specialists were not able to diagnose or treat. And that is what made me go to China and go all around the world looking for great healers. But what did I actually conclude and what did I actually learn? Well, in this video, we're going to jump in. I'm going to share more and share three case studies from my practice. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine. Now, I'm also author of the health book, Master the Day. So let's jump in. Case study number one, the woman who was told she needed an irreversible surgery. Now, this is a brand new patient case study I'm featuring here on my channel. Someone who was in her early to mid 20s and had a very, very bad pap smear. Now, the pap smear result showed that more than two thirds of her cervix was covered in precancerous cells. And typically they do a procedure called the LEAP procedure, which is an electrosurgical procedure where they basically shave off the top layer of the cervix. And there is often a permanent decrease in potential fertility and the ability of a woman to actually have a child. This particular patient was not only not told about the risks involved, she was only later told that she would likely have to do this multiple times, that the first procedure wasn't even a guarantee, and that each time would have a subsequent decrease in her fertility or her ability to actually have a child. So as someone who was 26 and was in the medical field herself from a family of physicians and doctors, she was not very eager to do that. Now, take a look at the results Alyssa had from seeing me and taking these traditional formulas. My regular appointment, so I was sent to get a cervical bite biopsy to find out what was causing the abnormality. And then the biopsy came back with cervical intraepithelial dysplasia. So basically, um, precancerous cells it was stage two to three, I believe. The doctor at the time recommended a series of things that were all, in my opinion, really aggressive and abrasive treatment options. One was a cervical biopsy and one was some kind of laser electrosurge. He said it's not guaranteed it would work the first time, like they remove the abnormal cells and then wow. it, it may come back. So wow. I left really uh, kind of shaken after that appointment because yeah. to me, like you can't even guarantee it's going to work uh, and it's very aggressive and they do sedate yeah. you for it and it's in the operating room and you know, it's a hefty thing. Sad part is no alternatives were offered. So I'm lucky that I was pointed nice. in your direction, but for those other women, you know, if even if this video helps one, then yeah. I did my job. Alyssa was told she needed an irreversible surgery and that there were no alternatives. They were wrong and they call me the quack. If you guys are interested in some of these healing principles that I worked with my patients on, I put together a free guide for healing practices from traditional Chinese medicine. It's a link right below this video. You'll also get my weekly video newsletter if you sign up as well. I'm also taking a limited number of new patients in person in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. You can reach out in the description below. You can call or contact my practice to learn more. Case study number two, the woman that was told she needed heart medicine for her palpitations and frequent arrhythmias. Now this particular person really is a composite of many patients that I've seen because while lots of people come in with heart palpitations and arrhythmias, typically if they don't have any kind of cardiovascular issues and most that come to me don't, they're under 50, it's typically just stress. And the stress can easily disrupt the electrical signals to the heart and with the nervous system overall. So for this particular woman, she was in the medical profession herself and she had been given beta blockers due to an irregular heartbeat that she was experiencing. Now she said something was very, very distinct and very funny about her palpitations and the arrhythmia she was getting. She said, you know what's interesting? Most often I get them after meals or I get them after meals and then when I lay down or when laying down at night. Now in traditional Chinese medicine, there's a very, very distinct kind of palpitation that is not due to the nervous system, right? Not due to people working a lot and being stressed out. It's a palpitation that is due to dysfunction in the digestive system and is related to the functioning of the vagus nerve. So if you Google the vagus nerve, you'll see some nice pretty images about where it connects to, where in the body, where it innervates and where it originates. Now, what's interesting is that for people with this sort of pattern, we just call them digestive palpitations. It is related to dysfunction of the digestive system in the stomach, not the heart, or even really necessarily the nervous system in that way of stress response. So for 
these kinds of people, anything that overinflates the stomach, a large meal, excessive liquid, people who have acid reflux or are prone to indigestion, will get a giant palpitation or a series of palpitations that is associated with eating only or when they lay down. So for these kinds of people, it is very easily remedied by a couple of traditional formulas in traditional Chinese medicine. So for this woman, a cardiologist put her on a heart medication that he said you were going to need for the rest of your life. Thankfully for her, she came to see me. And in her case, she ended up actually taking a formula for fixing some of the upper GI issues that were going on. And lo and behold, she was able to stop the beta blocker medication that she was taking for these palpitations and arrhythmias. That is a very common case study I see in my practice of where anytime someone comes in with palpitations or arrhythmias, they're given beta blockers, even though they're 25. And obviously going through a high stress phase of life, the palpitations will be gone in three months and they're medicated right up until the day they die. Problem, the majority of these patients and these people are too afraid to stop because it's the heart. It's terrifying, right? You don't want your heart to stop. You don't want to have a heart attack. You don't want to have a stroke. And yet the cardiologist putting the fear of the Lord in you is ridiculous in many of these cases. Case study number three, the man who was told he would need antidepressants forever. So this man was on three antidepressants when he came to see me, which already is quite a lot for depression. So this was severe treatment resistant depression. This is someone who was so clinically depressed that three antidepressants was what it took just to get him out of bed and functioning, to keep his job, to feed himself, right? This was not like a high performing executive type. He was so severely ill that these three antidepressants was what it took to just sit up and work remotely in bed. That's how bad it was. Now, these kinds of cases are really the bottom of the barrel of conventional medicine. They'll just throw antidepressants at you until the day they die. When it stops being responsive, they increase the dosage. When that continues to happen, they add another medication medication and on and on it goes. It is a classic system here. But for this particular man, he knew that he wanted healing. And after 10 years of being on three antidepressants of various kinds, that is not an easy thing to do for anyone. Generally, these are considered hopeless cases in conventional medicine, and they won't even discuss the possibility of getting off. They'll just say, well, if you still feel bad, just take it again. It's understandable from a logical point of view, but he knew he wanted healing. He was concerned about some of the side effects in other parts of his life, and he wanted to get off of them. Now, for this particular man, what we started off with was a formula that treated did what we consider the kidneys. Now the kidneys in traditional Chinese medicine, they overlap with the anatomical kidney, the genitourinary system, so people who have issues with libido, erections, that kind of thing, and also urination. So a lot of formulas we use to treat, let's say urinary dysfunction, are treating the kidneys in traditional Chinese medicine. But there's one final class, which is the adrenal and stress hormones. So a lot of the time, what looks like adrenal exhaustion, people who have severe depression, severe fatigue, or they have like a hypothyroid picture, we treat it as kidney deficiency, kidney yang deficiency, as they say, in traditional Chinese medicine. So for this man, we started him off on a basic formula to get his strength back. When he came in, he was complaining of severe fatigue, insomnia, acid reflux every day, and really just all of the primal kinds of hungers were not there. The desire for life, the desire for food, the desire for sex, the desire for connection. The battery, the primal battery charge was gone. And that's what severe clinical depression is. So we gave him a battery recharging formula, as I like to call it to my patients, and nothing changed in a week or two. But after three or four weeks, I noticed that he would come in and he would say, you know, I'm not really feeling that much better, but he started building this business that he'd wanted to build for a decade. And then after another three weeks, he came in and he said, you know what? I just uploaded my first YouTube video. And then I've been working on this little novel that I've wanted to work on for a while. And then, you know, I've always wanted to volunteer at this local school. And so what was incredible to see was that he said, you know, I'm not feeling better, but clearly all the evidence was there that he had so much energy that suddenly he left his house for the first time in three weeks. He cleaned for the first time in over a month. He reached out to an old friend for the first time in six months, half a year. And after two months, then he said, you know, I think I'm actually starting to feel better. Went back to his PCP. They were able to get him off one medication. He felt fine. On and on and on this journey and this story went. Three months, six months, all the milestones, nine months, a year, year and a half. After about a year and a half or two years, finally he came in and sat down one day and said, you know what? I think I'm finally ready to move. There's some things I've always wanted to do and I want to work on and these trips I want to take and I'm feeling good and I feel like I'm strong enough to do that now. A month later, he reached out and said, you know what? I've worked with my PCP. I haven't been on any of my antidepressant medications. And besides a little bit of fatigue, I don't feel down. I don't feel anxious. I don't feel like I'm sleeping poorly. Just a little bit of fatigue, but it's nothing I can't handle anymore. So this person was a perfect case study of treatment resistant depression. That was very, very difficult case, east or west. And this is the kind of person that if you say, oh, you know, doc, is there an alternative for this? Something I can use to, yeah, right. You have treatment resistant depression. There's nothing that someone can do for that. And yet we were able to not only treat it symptomatically, but get them off 
the medications. So these three people, one was told they would need surgery, one was told they'd need medication for life for their heart, one was told they would need multiple antidepressants till the day they died. And thankfully, they did not. The reason why I share this video is because there are lots of alternatives that can help you. And there are alternatives to medications in many cases, but they are not things typically your physician is educated on and therefore they will not recommend because they do not know and they don't trust. So my desire to shoot this, to share this, is to let you know there are alternatives. Now, if you guys are interested in some of these healing principles that I worked with my patients on, I've launched a brand new program, Introduction to Healing with Traditional Chinese Medicine, a new online course to help try to keep this channel as ad and sponsor free as possible. Rather than me shelling out some supplements or sponsoring some company I really know nothing about and probably honestly doesn't even relate to you that much, I've launched a series of online programs on how to heal with TCM. So there's a link right below, the pinned comment below this video will have more. And then I have a great related video for you right here.